So guys, Balami Etinibu has successfully put a, a lot of confusion among the Northerners. As I'm talking to you, the Northerners are fighting and clashing against themselves. Remember that the Northerners have said that there won't be anything that, that they will not agree on anything that has to do with regional or state bill. That anything that any form of state or regional bill that they will not agree on it. Remember what happened in the bill that Balami Etinibu sent to the National Assembly that passed the first reading. The National Executive Council led by Shetima you know, and, and other Northern leaders and, and other leaders you know, said that Balami Etinibu should go and withdraw the bill that he sent to the National Assembly that have passed the Fed view. What is this bill all about? I'm going to show you the fight and uh, whilst the Northern Senators are clashing and fighting amongst themselves. But let me tell you, even if you don't like, like him, he's a master strategist in this particular bill. You know, like I've said, what this country needs is everything that has to do with regional autonomy, state autonomy and all that. This is what the country needs because a lot of people are operating on the system of monkey, they work, babu, they shop. I'm going to play a video so you can listen to what some Northern Senators are arguing and clashing with Alin Dume. You remember, Alin Dume came out and said that Balami Etinibu's deal, that bill that he brought to the National Assembly is dead on arrival, that they will not even review the bill, that they will not even look at the bill, that they must reject the bill, just because the Northern governors told them that they must reject all the bill uh, uh, that has to do with this tax reform, regional or state bill that Bola Mitribu brings to the House of Assembly. Uh, House of Assembly. Ali Dume said that he will reject the bill. When she of, uh, of uh, Chinese TV asked him, did you review the bill or probably have you gone through the bill to see if it was ever? He said, no, that he doesn't need to go through the bill. Now a Northern senator is coming to clash with him. I'm going to show you the Northern Senator from Kano State, you know, came out and told them the bitter truth between the Northern State. Let me play the video so you could listen attentively and see what is actually happening. But Lamy Etinibu has put confusion. You see, what the country needs as a matter of fact is regional state view, regional autonomy, and anything that has to do with full resource control that the Northern are against. Let me play the video so you could see what happened. When we come back, we we'll try to dissect and analyze everything. If this is your first time of coming to my channel, do well to click on the subscribe button because we'll be giving important political updates and information on this particular channel. Click on the notification bell so you get notified whenever we drop important videos and updates like this. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, those who do not have the, the, uh, uh, the benefit of uh, having contact with the bill, being able to study it, uh, I've had several conversations about it, studied the, uh, the spirit and the letters of, of that bill, and uh, looking at the departure that it has with the old tax system in Nigeria, those, the drafters of that bill will tell you that this is going to give us a brand new outlook to our tax system. But let me ask you, since you have read it, can you tell Nigerians what exactly do you think makes some northern leaders uncomfortable? Well, uh, the, the impression is that uh, uh, the North will uh, lose in its, uh, uh, in its revenue stream. And uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you don't take that, uh, that uh, clause in isolation. You take the clause in connection to all other clauses that connect to the entirety of the bill for you to be able to uh, value, uh, to, 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 to uh, draw a value or do a valuation on how much importance uh, that bill is uh, to the northern uh, uh, part of the country. But you see the most important aspect of it, rather than this front and back, the bill is in the National uh, Assembly. The National Assembly is not guided by the military where you put guns in our heads to talk. Uh, it will go through the process. It will come to public hearing. And all of these things uh, will be discussed. And I have also said to you that if there is a fear about uh, oh, losing revenue, uh, you will do a run in average. What sort of revenue are you earning? And I have also seen in the bill that there's a provision for a buffer. So you will sit down and have a debate. How much percentage you want to be drawing into that uh, equalization uh, fund to be able to meet the regular target that you used to uh, 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 to meet uh, on a normal uh, on a normal day. So I actually believe uh, uh, that uh, there's so many so many good things uh, uh, about uh, about the bill. I have had experience in uh, in this country. Uh, I remember during the seventh uh, the assembly. We did a constitutional uh, amendment, one of the best constitutional amendment for this country, because of one single clause. Uh, that constitutional process was headed by the former deputy speaker, Emeka Hedioha. Because of one single clause, it was not uh, passed. The whole thing was thrown away. Millions of naira that was invested all uh, the west, uh, the wasted. But uh, the, the, this, this bill, uh, things that have been studied now in the National Assembly, members are come. They're going uh, 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 through the bill. They will read it properly. 
it will go through uh, uh, the processes and I believe that at the end of the day uh, we will get uh, we get this bill passed. Now if you listen attentively to what that uh, Senator Jibrin from Kano State uh, is actually saying, he's saying that some of these northern senators have not even reviewed the bigger or probably reviewed the bill to know if it will be beneficial to them that they're just coming out to say we don't want the bill and all that because of what? A clause they don't like. What is the clause that they, they don't like in that particular bill? Because but like my table said that states will not be enjoying 60% of whatever you derive in your state. Meaning this is what we call full resource control that whatever that whatever value uh, VAT that is being derived in your state you will first of all collect 60 percent of it before the remaining 40 or 10 percent will be shared and the remaining 30 percent will be shared that 60 percent is your own which is what it's supposed to be so this is the clause that the northern senators the northern governors and the northern leaders are against because they want a situation whereby alcohol that is not being sold in the northern part of the country they will be collecting some of the VAT that is being collected on the sale of alcohol from the southern part of the country which does not make sense so this senator is, is saying that the bill is not dead on arrival that the bill, you can see that the bill is not dead on arrival, that the bill must pass through the National Assembly. He's supporting the bill. He's a Northern Senator, but he's supporting the bill. And these are the kind of senators that the Northerners should actually support. The Northerners that understands the integrity and in, in, uh, 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 and the, you know, uh, the importance of some certain bills. Not all these Aline do make them and go that they did not even go through the bill, but they came out to start opposing it because the Northern Governor said, don't accept this bill. They, because they, they don't want to work. They want to be lazy. They don't want to hustle and generate more IGR and more value added tax and attract more for Foreign direct investment and foreign investors to their region. No, they want to fold their arms and expect that whatever VAT that is collected from other states will, will be shared equally across states that do not want to work hard and probably secure their region. I, uh, the other day, I spoke about the new terrorist group that came out in the northern part of the country, and these are the issues. They will not focus on the main issues on how to tackle insecurity and other things in the, in the northern part of the country so that the foreign investors who can actually come to their state and they will be generating more VAT. No. They are busy, you know, allowing insecurity to take over regions and take uh, uh, and territories within their area because they know at the end of the day, they, 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 the federal government from the sales of oil will bring up money and give to them. All they need is security votes and all that. And this is why they don't want this particular view to, view to be added because they want to fold their arms. They don't want to invent and create new ways on generating uh, uh, revenue. I love what this Senator Jibrin said, that if they look at the view from a bigger angle, it is going to benefit them more. But they are fighting against one particular clause. The class of 60% derivative, which is a, a, a regional or probably a state bill that will see a, 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 a result of full control, a resource control. A lot of people are supporting it apart from the northern governors, the northern leaders. That Alain Dume came out and said that the bill is dead on our arrival. But let me tell you, said it's a lie. Shetima headed the National Economic Council that told Bala to withdraw the bill. But let me tell you, said it's a lie. Tosh Kashim Shetima and whoever you know came together to make such agreement that he's she is not going to withdraw the bill. That since the bill has actually passed first reading in the National Assembly, that they that they must allow the bill to complete its due course. That it is the work of the National Assembly to vet the bill to know which clause to remove or probably add because it will come to po or public uh, reading and public space. So this is what the senator is saying. Why not allow it? If why do you want the bill to be removed, which is unconstitutional because it, it is our National Assembly that should go through the bill and you know, make amends. I love what Bolami Tinubu is doing to some Northerners because now there is confusion. Now the Northerners are realizing that some of our senators and some of our leaders are lazy and they want to remain in laziness so that they, they can keep on eating from the federal allocation. Well, that's that for that. I just wanted to bring it to your notice. Today, Reno Mokri, who has been criticizing uh, P2B, came out and started praising P2B today and started defending Mr. P2B. Remember, P2B went on a podcast and said something. He, he, he went on a podcast and said that, you know, why he was a student of, uh, he was still a, a university student. He built two Savannah banks in Onicha. That's, the Savannah bank actually came and took over around the 1980 something and, and, and all that. And you know, some APC, uh, you know, miscreants and some APC, you know, uh, uh, bitter people started attacking him. That how is it possible that people be built a bank branch as a, as, a, as a, a student in the country? You know, some people poor mindset and they are poor, you know, uh, 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 finances. They did, they can't believe that a student can make investment while still in, 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 in investing. Some people are there pushing years up and down, not knowing that some people are making investments right from their university days. So some of them started saying that P2P lied that Savannah Bank was not established when P2P claimed that he built Savannah Bank and all that. Then look at what Reno Mokri told them. As you can see, they said Reno Mokri defends P2P, fought Gogo on Savannah Bank. They said, I recall that Mokri, since, since throwing his support for Balami Etinibu after years of mocking him, has been attacking P2P and his followers on social media. As you can see, they said, said Reno Mokri has defended P2B, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 election, following claims that he lied about building a branch of Savannah Bank in Anambra. Omokri said that Gogo's answer on the issue was wrong. Recall that Omokri, since throwing his support for Balami Etinibu after the years of mocking has been attacking P2B and his followers, he said he took it to his social media page and wrote something. Look at what Reno Mokri wrote. He said, I may have differences with P2B, however, 
However, he is not likely to have lied about building the Savannah Bank branch. Goku is often right, but it is sometimes not correct. Savannah Bank could not have been founded in 1989 because I remember visiting the Savannah Bank at the current trade fair complex Lagos with my late mother as a child. Her office was close by. I also recall visiting Savannah Bank in Portacourt when I visited her brother who played for the Sharks of Portacourt Football Club. You know, they were arguing that when P2B said that he built Savannah Bank, that Savannah Bank has not started operating, that Savannah Bank started operating in 1989, which was not accurate because Savannah Bank has started operating since before the time. So this, this is what you know, Moki was trying to you know, remind APC people that started attacking P2B, that P2B was lying and all that. He said, both visits were after 1983 and before 1986. During the visit to Portacourt, my footballer uncle Mike Okuti alias Sonny Sparkle took his photograph. Took this photograph. I was between 10 and 12 when this photo was taken was taken. I know this because I checked my passports to know when I was in Nigeria and when I was abroad. I keep meticulous records. So Bruno Bokri is defending that P2B is correct.